Hello everyone and welcome to my channel where I discover the most interesting facts about weapons, dispel myths and compare what we see on our screens with real life examples. In this video we will talk about miniguns and try to figure out how good of a weapon it really is. We will discuss whether this weapon makes more sense than any ordinary machine gun and I will talk about the pros and cons as well as the history of its creation and use. If you are interested, please like and be sure to watch the video to the end. Let's go back in time to the 1960s when the US military was facing a problem. They were having a tough time fighting against large groups of enemies. The traditional weapons they had just couldn't handle such tasks. So the military decided to create something new, something special. And that's when the story of the minigun began. During the Vietnam War, the Americans started using helicopters a lot to transport soldiers and supplies. But as the helicopters landed, they became easy targets for the enemy, who were hiding in the dense jungle vegetation. The ordinary machine guns like the M60 and M2 were not effective at suppressing the enemy. In fact, the shooters would quickly overheat the barrels and the guns would malfunction, which was not ideal in the middle of a battle. So the engineers at General Electric came up with a genius idea. They took their huge 6-barrel M61 Vulcan machine gun and downsized it to 7.62 NATO caliber. And voila! The M134 minigun was born. This new gun had some really unique features. For one, it had a high rate of fire. Depending on the model, it could shoot from 2,000 to 6,000 rounds per minute. That's insane! And the high rate of fire was possible thanks to a special electric drive. Now here's the really cool thing about the minigun. Its design is not like any ordinary machine gun. Technically, it's several guns in one housing. Each barrel has its own cartridge case, bolt, locking mechanism and extractor for spent cartridges. And all of these are connected to one block to which the barrels are attached. In short, the minigun is an awesome weapon that can inflict significant damage at long distances. Now let's talk about the power of the minigun. We've already covered its crazy rate of fire, but what about the force of a single shot? Well, the 7.62 NATO cartridge used by the M134 packs a punch of 3.5 thousand joules. And when you multiply that by the insane rate of fire of 6,000 shots per minute, you get over 20 million joules of kinetic energy per minute. That's like blowing up 4 kilograms of TNT every minute. In short, the minigun is as dangerous as a sniper rifle, but one that can shoot up to 100 rounds per second. With that kind of power, the minigun can take down armored vehicles and other heavily armed targets, especially if you're firing at a target with lots of bullets. Of course, a minigun like this won't penetrate a tank, but a light vehicle won't last long against it. But here's the thing, even though the minigun is a powerhouse, it's not something your average soldier can just carry around. It weighs a whopping 30 kilograms, which is like carrying a small elephant on your shoulders. While you can lift it, it's almost impossible to aim accurately because the mechanism throws it from side to side when it's fired up. That's why it's usually mounted on vehicles or stationary positions. And when it's used from helicopters, it's perfect for shooting at large groups of enemies, just like spraying a can of bug spray on a swarm of mosquitoes. By the way, there are a few other miniguns beside the M134, or rather its predecessors, the Gatling gun and the M61 Vulcan. In 1861, Richard Gatling invented and patented his namesake weapon, the Gatling gun. It had six rotating barrels and each barrel made one shot with each full rotation. The cartridges fell into the barrel by gravity through a cassette or magazine installed on top and the rotating mechanism was activated manually by the shooter. The rate of fire was controlled by the speed at which the shooter turned the handle. Richard Gatling even experimented with an electric mechanism for rotating the barrels, but electric motors and power sources were not compact or reliable enough to arm infantry units with such weapons at the time. Nonetheless, Gatling was able to achieve a rate of fire of 3,000 shots per minute. Later in the era of high technology after World War II, the idea of multi-barreled weapons came back with a vengeance. The US Air Force, after its war experience, wanted a faster firing weapon than traditional single-barrel machine guns and rifles because airplanes were getting faster and hitting them was becoming increasingly difficult. By the way, 
This is why aviation and anti-aircraft versions of machine guns always had higher rates of fire. In response to this request, the General Electric Weapons Division developed the M61 Vulcan, a 20mm six-barrel gun with a rate of fire of 6,000 shots per minute, just like the M134. However, the Vulcan gun was several times larger than the minigun. With a weight of over 100 kilograms, this is like a real beast that can only be carried by something like a fighter jet or a navy vessel. But in terms of firepower, this thing is really scary. 20mm ammo can even make a 50 caliber look tiny and unserious. The muzzle energy of the Vulcan is 20 to 30 times greater compared to its little brother, but it's actually more like a cannon than a regular machine gun. So let's break down the pros and cons of the mighty minigun. On the plus side, this bad boy packs a serious punch. It's one of the most powerful machine guns ever made, capable of taking down even light armor and causing serious damage to most ground targets. And let's not forget about its lightning fast rate of fire, thanks to its multiple barrels and electric motor. But as with most things, there are some downsides to the minigun. First off, this baby is a real ammo eater. To keep it firing for any length of time, you're gonna need a boatload of 7.62 NATO rounds, which can be expensive and tricky to transport. Plus, the gun itself is pretty hefty and not exactly easy to move around, so forget about running and gunning with this bad boy. Furthermore, they're not the cheapest in the US Air Force's arsenal. To give you an idea, if you wanted to shoot a minigun continuously for a minute, it would require 6,000 rounds, weighing in at 60 kilograms. This is another reason why it's extremely difficult for someone carrying a minigun to move around, as the ammunition can easily weigh several times more than the weapon itself. Maintenance and cleaning the minigun is also a bit of a hassle and can cost you both time and money. And if something goes wrong with the weapon, good luck trying to fix it yourself. This thing is seriously complex, with six separate barrels, cartridge receivers, an electric motor, and a bunch of gear drives. If a standard weapon were to malfunction, an ordinary soldier could theoretically fix it. But this is not the case with a minigun. Let's compare the minigun with some ordinary machine gun. For example, a well-proven high-speed machine gun like the popular M249 can be taken. This weapon can be comfortably carried in your hands as it is much lighter than the minigun and it is highly mobile overall. In terms of firing rate, it can fire up to 1,000 rounds per minute and can shoot at sufficiently long distances. Although the minigun has a higher firing rate, it is not always an advantage. It can also shoot at long distances, but problems arise at close range. The minigun is usually installed on a stationary position, making it impossible to quickly change targets by swinging your hand. And let's not forget about the image of a soldier running around and spinning in all directions with a minigun in hand. You'll never see that in real life, unless of course you're a Terminator. But when it comes to maintenance, the M249 only needs one person to service it, the same person who holds the weapon. Changing the ammunition is also done by one person. Plus, the price of this machine gun varies around $4,000, while the minigun can't boast about all these advantages and often starts at half a million dollars or several hundred thousand for simpler versions. Of course, if you need to deal with more than just infantry, the minigun is intended for a wider range of targets. But when it comes to convenience and versatility in real combat, the handheld machine gun undoubtedly beats this bulky six-barreled beast. But let's be real, who doesn't want to feel like a badass wielding a minigun in a game? I mean, it's like the ultimate power trip. You can just imagine all those demons in Doom or the crazy monsters in Serious Sam trembling in fear at the sight of you and your minigun. But the reality is, if you actually tried to carry around a minigun like that in real life, you'd probably collapse after a few steps. And forget about trying to use it with any kind of accuracy, you just end up spraying bullets everywhere like a crazy person. So if you ever find yourself facing a real life monster invasion or a demon horde, just remember that the minigun is not the answer. Instead, grab a good old fashioned shotgun or an assault rifle, something that's actually practical and effective. So what do you think? How cool is the minigun compared to an ordinary machine gun? Write about it in the comments and give a like if you enjoyed this video.